Moving on, I would now like to call on stage Sufyan Badimulla. Sufyan is currently studying, studying to be an alim. With his in-depth knowledge of Deen, he is often invited to colleges and universities to talk on various topics on Islam. Sufyan is also an integral part of our al Indad team. He's our graphics maestro. Basically, he makes it look good. It is also my good fortune that he also happens to be my nephew. I often see him and wonder. I wish I could be like him, think like him, talk like him. You will know why I say this when you listen to him talk about my beloved, your beloved, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So please welcome on stage Sufyan Humayn Walimullah. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The wind outside was open. Let's try again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah, I've put in some hand clapping hands. When we look through the Quran, we'll find time and time again that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will talk about His beloved in a way no other, one, no, no other can talk, no other can praise. And in one particular verse he says, وَمَا أَسَلَّاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you. Allah is saying, Oh my beloved, I have not sent you illa except as a mercy to the alameen, to the world, planet, nebulous galaxy. As far as the scientists can count, he is sent as a mercy. When we talk about mercy, usually we only think of one type of mercy. But mercy manifests its ways in different forms. Most importantly, one type of mercy is the compassionate mercy. The type of mercy which we're, we're most familiar with. The type of mercy which we get from our grandparents. When we're a young child crying for that lollipop, they say, take it, go take it. That's the compassionate type of mercy. But the caring type of mercy is the type of mercy we get from our parents when they say, no, no, no. That lollipop, they know the harm we will cause to our teeth. And out of the care, they will stop us. That's the caring mercy. And in life, we need the perfect balance of both. We can't just have either or. And the most excellent fusion of this mercy is none other than our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We'll find numerous occasions, numerous occasions of his compassion and mercy towards humanity. And yet, in his teachings, in his practices, in his laws, in his ways, in his life, we'll also find immense amount of caring mercy. The perfect fusion of both. Just to mention a few time little limit. Um, I've been traveling in a van from Blackburn to London, which has a speed limit of 62 miles per hour. So I'm used to getting a little bit slow. So that helped me speed up a bit. Time is slow, I've got a lot to cover, inshallah. Just to mention a few of the incidents. We all know of the incident of Taif, when the Prophet Muhammad goes to these people as a mercy to guide them. And they stole him. They try humiliating him. And we know what happens afterwards. What, what most of us don't know is that at the time, you know if you want to measure someone's mercy, it's not the moment when they're sitting relaxed. It's at the time when they're most frustrated. How merciful they are when they, they're put to the test. That's how we can measure how merciful someone is. And at this very moment, when these people are stoning him, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is not worrying about his own pain, but he's lifting the blood. Why? Worrying about them because he knows if that blood touches the ground, there's nothing that's going to save them from Allah's anger. So to save them, he is catching his own blood. The same people who are stoning him. Now that's mercy. At the same moment, you know what happens usually when we're angry? Husband and wives. At the moment when they get angry, nothing works. Ten minutes later, I love you, already sorry. Yeah? But at the moment, no one would say. This is at the moment, at the very afternoon of the moment. He's cutting his blood to say them. And when he leaves the town, one word, he only has to say one word. 
Not even Abu Bakr al that's two words. We bless one word, and Allah will destroy them. Yet he prays for them, saying, they don't know. Maybe someday someone from there will be guided. On another occasion, there was, there was a man who was a Jewish rabbi, and he had been very carefully examining the Prophet Muhammad And on one occasion, he saw that a person had come with a need, and it was our Prophet's habit never to turn anywhere away. Even though he had nothing himself, he never turned anywhere empty handed, even though he was empty handed himself. And when this man comes, he turns to the person next to him, and he affirms, You don't have anything. So when the Jewish man sees this, he makes a deal with the Prophet saying, Look, I'll give you a certain amount of money, a certain amount of gold, you give it to this person, and then you pay me back when the time comes. On a fixed date. And the Prophet agrees. He takes a debt so he can help this person. And coming closer to the time when he had to repay his debt, this Jewish man comes, and in public, he tries to humiliate our Prophet. He pulls his cloak and he says, You haven't paid me back. Although he knew that the time hasn't come. Now, because this is in public, Hazrat Umar stands up and you know one thing, never mention Hazrat Umar. He goes up saying, what was that? Straight away the Prophet comes in dancing, Hazrat Umar comes down. And he gives him a few orders, saying, do this, do this. Whilst Hazrat Umar is carrying out these orders, he takes this Jewish man, he takes him to the area and he pays him back the exact amount which was owed to the Prophet, by the Prophet Hazrat Umar. But he also pays him back a hefty amount extra. So this Jewish man asks, why, why, why is this extra? He says, the Prophet Muhammad told me, don't just give him back what I owe him, but also give him a bit of extra because of the brutal treatment you gave to him. And this man immediately, he accepts Islam, and he tells Hazrat Umar that you know what, this whole, the whole reason why I did this was because I was testing two signs. I am a very learned Jewish Allama, better than Ali, al Allama, a very learned person. But I wanted to find two signs of Prophet in your Prophet. One is that when a fool comes to him and acts more foolish, he becomes more generous. And that his gentleness will overcome his anger. And I found those two signs. I was just testing One can go on and on with all the different accounts when our Prophet of Mercy has he's proved in his life that it's impossible for anyone to make him lose his cool and his mercy. But what we also find in his life and his ways is his carrying mercy, the laws in which he set out. Just to give one example, people know about women's rights activists today. The greatest women's rights activist ever in history is our Prophet of he gave women rights from other religions, we're still debating whether they had a soul. At the same time, and I don't even want to mention which religion that is, but it's predominant in this country. But our Prophet wasn't just a mercy to humanity at the time, he was a mercy to humanity for all of time. So much so that when Gerd Wilders, the Dutch national politician, when he plans his next assault against our Prophet, when he's drinking his coffee as he's writing the script, he is benefiting from the mercy of our Prophet. Because that drink which is thinking was invented by the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When we use our cars and the cranks and the piston that makes the engine work, it was invented by a Muslim. All these inventions which the world enjoys are made by the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Even they are benefiting from his mercy. I can go on and on, but in this short time, I want everyone here to leave with something. Three things actually. Rather than discussing how mercy was given to us, we need to ask ourselves, how will we reciprocate this mercy which we received? How will we reciprocate this mercy? And I just want to mention three things, three very important things. And the first is vital to the second two. Without the first, the second two don't exist. Number one, love him more than anything. <coughs> love him more than anything. We learn from the hadith, if we didn't want to have iman, then we have to love him more than anything, any creature in this earth. We have to love our beloved from the promise of Allah. Inshallah. I mean, he loved us so much, even though he didn't even, didn't even know we existed. He didn't even know us individually, he didn't know us. He knew us collectively, not individually. But he loved us and paid for us individually. So much so that in his lifetime, when he used to drink water, the Sahaba would gather around and make sure that they catch any leftover and they drink that leftover because they knew how blessed he was. And even though he knew this, on one occasion he took the water and he poured it back into the well. So the Sahaba asked, why? And at that moment, he was thinking about us. He said, my brothers who are on here today, what about them? When will they get to drink my leftover water? So I poured it back into the well of Zamzam. So from now on, whoever drinks from this well will be drinking my leftover. He loved us so much that he thought about us at that time. How could we not love him? 
Point number two, if we love him, we'll emulate him. We'll want to copy every single thing like him. We want to copy his sunnah. We want to be as close as possible to him in every way he perform. We want to talk like him. We want to walk like him. We want to act like him. We want to do every single thing just like him. Because we love him. We all know when Jibreel came to give the first revelation, he said, Ikra, read, recite. And Prophet Muhammad replied, Ma ala bikari, I'm not going to let it, I can't recite. And in between this, what did Jibreel Islam do? He went and grasped the Prophet. I ever wondered why. Put yourself in the position of Jibreel Islam. He's been waiting for an age, trillions of millions, Allah Allah knows how long he's been waiting to see this beloved Prophet, whom he loves so much. Now that he's in front of him, he can't contain himself. He has to stop and he has to hug him. But that was a matter of seconds. Jibreel Islam couldn't contain himself. He had to grasp the Prophet. Yet we go through 30, 40 years of our life and we can't grasp his sunnah. How can we say we love him? When we follow his sunnah, we will only benefit. We will only benefit. There are times when people will say, you know what, it's modern society gives more rights. Especially when it comes to women. They'll say, in the, according to the sunnah, women can't work. No way does they say that. Islam never says women can't work. He says they shouldn't have to. In the West, we have a saying. For women, what's mine is mine, and what's his is also mine. Islam gives them that as a basic right. Prophet Muhammad to made sure every woman got that. So much so that, sisters, you can go to the shop, and you can do what you do best. Shop till you drop, then turn to your husband and say the three beautiful words. None I love you, pay the bill. That's all you have to do. That's your right in Islam. That's the sunnah. Whenever we adopt the sunnah, whenever we in any moment of our life, look towards his life, and Lord will be a mercy towards us. Compassionate or kind, we'll get both. If you don't know how to be the best friend, look towards the life of Hazrat Abu Bakr and Prophet Muhammad If you don't know about love, forget all these love movies. Look at the life of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Aisha. It's totally unique. It's what Laila and Majud want it to be. What Romeo and Juliet couldn't have been. What the Twilight Saga never will be or what no one else ever will be. No one thing in history or fiction or imagination has ever been able to remotely portray anything as beautiful as what Allah made a reality in their life. If you don't know how to be the best friend, the best son, the best father, the best father, the best teacher, the best student, the best master, the best slave, look towards his life. And number three, when you love him really dearly and you adopt his ways, thank him and pray for him. Send the root upon him. Because he spent his entire life up to his last minute praying for us. The least we can do is at least spend a few minutes of our day praying for him. Even if it means going to the bad room when you go to sleep three times, serve Allah upon you and at the bare minimum. I mean, come on. There's so many acts of worship. There's so many different things in Islam. But you know what makes the Buddha unique? Even Allah sends the Buddha upon the Prophet. Kali's here because recited the very verse of the Quran where Allah himself says, I send blessings. I send salawat upon my beloved. Who are you not to? Who are we not to? It's his right and it's the least we can do to ourselves. We owe it to ourselves. I'm surprised that when, when I mention the name, how can the crowd not be set ablaze with Salah Allah Alaihi Wasallam? And to rectify that, Allah is most merciful. I'm going to mention the Prophet thing once, and I want everyone in the crowd to say Salah Allah Alaihi I'm going to mention it now. Usually we say from the top, but today I'm going to say from the heart. Muhammad Salah Allah Alaihi Wasallam. From now on, whenever anyone, and even the forthcoming speakers, when they mention his name, everyone should say it aloud. Ameen. May Allah grant us the day the acceptance. Talk about all, of the, all what has been said, what has been heard, firstly to me and to everything in the world. May the makers of those who benefit from the mercy of our Prophet in this world and in the Akira forget the opportunity to drink from his blessed hands. Forget the opportunity to have him in our sight and ultimately be in his sight in Jannah. I mean, help and I mean. Lastly, I just want to mention our respected guest brother Naim Reza will be coming on later on to perform a small fundraiser. And we kindly request every single, single person here today. If you can't give much, give whatever you can. Even if it's a penny, don't worry. Give it on the way out. That penny could be the one that completes the mission. If Tesco says every day that helps, we'll say every single day that helps. Give whatever you can. Inshallah, I hope um, you'll all agree that there was a reason why I did say I wish I could be like him, talk like him, because I don't, I just have an accent, I can't talk like him. Um, besides, mashallah, I would just like to uh, mention we have a special person within our audience, our brother Nazir Hussain, 
He's actually a South African, and alhamdulillah, he's a close associate to Kani Ziad Patel. So a special mention of him, and may Allah give him barakah in his life, inshallah.